Hey friends, how you doing? I've been away for the longest time. I've been so busy. I haven't been on your screens doing baking unless it's repeats and things. I have paused my baking and my cooking. I was really, really burnt out from doing so many books and doing so much TV and lots of people pleasing. Even though I totally enjoyed um, all the stuff that I did, I was not really listening to myself. And there became a time when I didn't want to walk into a kitchen because I was just so, it used to cause me so much anxiety. So um, I've taken that time off and during the time over lockdown I actually got a master's degree in psychology. So lots of you know from my books that I always write little things, um, quotes and things and psychology is so important to me. So I've been doing that, I graduated uh, in August which was amazing and I just felt I really wanted to start doing YouTube videos because I've missed talking to you and I love the whole creative process. So I thought I wanted to share with you um, skincare, my skincare, my facial skincare and also self-compassion, how important self-compassion is. So I'm going to start straight away and I might need my glasses now and again because my eyes are terrible, my memory's not great, I've got my notes here too. Um, I bought these glasses from Pretty Little Thing and I got my optician to put the lenses in. Hey, what do you think? <laughs> so I've just got my notes down here. Okay, so today, oh, and I'm looking down because I'm looking at my laptop. I know that's not great, but that's me. So yeah, so it's about self-compassion -comp and, and also self-care. Now, how do they two, how do those two go together? So when I was doing my, make, taking my makeup off the other day, I was really trying to, I'm trying to slow down in life. And I was sort of rubbing in the cream and really like appreciating how it felt and sort of taking that time to um, just slow down and not rush through it. I mean, sometimes I fall asleep with my makeup on, let's be honest. Um, but I just had this sudden thought about self-compassion and self-compassion is about being kinder to ourselves. It's, um, it's a very powerful concept and anyway, let me just start with the beauty first as well. <laughs> so my first product is Ren Evercalm Gentle Milk and so my skin is aging. Um, I get breakouts up on my lip line, um, I'm kind of dry underneath the eyes and so I went to Ren and they suggested I use this product and a couple of other products that I'm going to go through you now, with you now. So the great thing about this Ren is the gentle cleansing milk is um, you use it, I always struggle having to wash my face and or, or in that way so the great thing about this is that you get a face cloth. sorry there's someone down there they just distracted me you can get a face cloth and um make it nice and warm and um, pop some of this onto your hand and then put it on your face this is great to take up i do it twice a day take my makeup off in the morning and then i do it in the evening if i uh if i don't just fall asleep with my makeup on which is not advisable so just pop that on your face lots of the it's a beautiful creamy texture and then you get a warm face cloth and then you can just wipe off the residue of your makeup. Now, I've got also a Lancome eye makeup remover. Uh, if you've got kind of, I've got my lashes on and there's the glue and the mascara. So the Lancome uh, mascara the eye makeup remover is really good for that too. And you just do that. And when I was thinking about compassion, it's about, it's being kind to your face and self-compassion the concept of self-compassion is about kindness and kindness is one of my highest and most important values and being kind to ourselves and talking to ourselves the way we would talk to a good friend 
and if you can kind of think about doing this when you're doing your facial, uh, doing your routine in the morning and not rush through it because being busy and rushing through it actually is stressful. Maybe we don't feel like we're stressed, but it's certainly stressful on the body. So it's like, how can we find ways and times to be kinder to ourselves? So that's putting that cleansing milk on the face and then with a face cloth, just gently, really gently wiping it off in circular movements and I kind of make my face cloth probably a bit too hot but I like the way it feels and I also like the, the fact that um, the makeup comes off really easily that way. So the second part of my skincare routine is this gentle cleansing gel again from Ren it's the Ever Calm range and again I always used to struggle when you have to put it on and then wash it off with water, wash it off with water, splash, 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 especially because my makeup is dark and gets everywhere, it would take ages to take off. So I love using a face cloth. I literally bought a whole load of face cloths from John Lewis, their home range, and like I literally use two a day, and um, so I always use a clean one. And then what you do is, again, you put this Ren Gentle Cleansing Gel on your face, and then you get your face cloth, and and then just wipe off the makeup like this. Now I need to do a deep clean because I do wear a lot of makeup and this really gets into the pores and gives you a lovely clean face afterwards. So that's the gentle cleansing gel from Ren and the Ever Calm range. And I like the dispenser, how it's easy to come out so there's no like squeezing. And um and again it's that whole thing about being kind to our faces. So do it gently, not like rubbing and attacking. And I was thinking about, my, my dog passed away recently, and I was thinking about how sometimes it's easy. I mean, it's, it's just a dog, but it's easy to think when this happens or when other things happen that don't go well in life, we lose people, we lose jobs, things don't go well, we have um, breakups. It's easy to think, why me? I'm a failure. Things aren't going right. What What is going on? Why is this happening? When in actual fact, it's important, I think, to see it as part as a human experience. So you're not a failure. Um, Things happen to everyone, things fail, relationships break down, we make mistakes and it's really good if we can try and see it as part of the human experience rather than turning it in towards ourselves um, and blaming ourselves and that is part of self-compassion. It's about being kind and gentle with ourselves and it's about realising that these things happen to everyone and on the surface I know you can look at other people's lives and they feel they look so much better than ours and they look like everyone's got it all sorted and I haven't and she's got this and she's got mine and she got that and this. But life throws us curveballs and it is literally part of the human experience. And when I started to look at life that way and less like a victim, I suppose, um, it's, I could see myself having more self-compassion and I realised that was self-compassion just to understand that it happens to everyone. It happens to everyone. And when something happens, get that support um, and understand that failures and this, that is just part of the human experience and it's something that we have to go through and make sure when things are going well that we try and get a good support system around us, that we have good friends around us that we have a therapist or we have a coach or we have and we have a routine we take care of ourselves with a gym and we've got a, a structure around us because that can help us remain um i won't say resilient um but it can help resilient is bounce back so yes it can help us bounce back when things go um, badly um but it also can give us a sense of security knowing that um we have support around us so it helped me when I got my therapist and I made new friends and this, and it helped me know that, well, when life throws me a curveball, at least I have like a support system in place. So that's understanding the human experience is a big part of self-compassion. Now, the next part of my routine is this. It's therapy, honey care, lemon myrtle antibacterial facial toner. Now, I don't actually know the correct way we're well, supposed to use it but what I like to do is spray it on my face and then I get a, a cotton pad and I just wipe off any last residue of makeup 
making sure it doesn't go around the eyes because this is quite strong it gives that lovely lovely tingle which i really enjoy uh so it makes it feel like it's really deep cleansing and especially along the lip line when i break where i break out so it's important to um yeah so this is like the third step in the deep cleanse cleansing routine and the third step i was thinking about self-compassion as well is so self-compassion is a great uh, construct they say in psychology to master and it has shown to have more benefits for us for our psychological well-being for how we feel um, more psychological um, positive impacts than actually self-esteem so self-esteem is how we regard ourselves do we have a positive regard of ourselves do we think we're a good person and it can be quite hard to build self-esteem when you don't feel good enough when you've had a difficult childhood or when you've had some uh, experience in life that's not your confidence or someone that's not your confidence self-esteem takes a while to build um self-compassion is something that we can do straight away so that's why self-compassion is very powerful we can be kind to ourselves we can treat ourselves in a loving way we can alter alter we can change that negative self-talk or we can at least try to and try and talk to us, ourselves more positively and lovingly so that's why i love the concept of self-compassion i love the concept of self-esteem as well but self-esteem does take time to build whereas self-compassion we can do it straight away and that brings me to the fourth step of my routine, which is Ren Bioretinoid Youth Cream. So Ren sent me this. <laughs> I was like, thanks, Ren. Are you trying to tell me something? Creme Jeunesse Youth Cream. Um, but it's, uh, I love using it. It's for sensible, sensible skin. It's for sensitive skin. And I just put probably too much on, on my hands, rub it in, warm a bit my hands, and then massaging it into the face round into the neck always remember the neck and that brings me to the fourth step of that which is how to practice self-compassion so one of the main ways that you can practice self-compassion is to talk to yourself the way you, you would talk to a good friend so when things go wrong in life we can berate ourselves criticize ourselves be so unkind but how would you talk to your friend? If a friend had come to you and they were upset, would you talk to them like that? No, you wouldn't. You talk to yourself lovingly. You maybe even give yourself a little hug. You take out your, your friend out maybe for a nice walk or ask what she wants or can I do anything to help you feel better? What support do you need? And yet to ourselves, we speak to ourselves like, oh, you're so stupid about well, me. I said, you're so stupid. Why did you do that? How could you do that? Oh, oh. And that's not going to help us feel better. So one way to practice self-compassion is to start talking to yourself the way you would a loving friend. Now, I know I read lots of stuff about um, how do I stop that negative inner voice? You know, I've been working on the negative inner voice for many years and it's much softer, but it's still there a little bit. So rather than trying to control this thing that's been there for a while, practice uh, having a compassionate voice so you have to make a real effort the negative voice seems to be quite automatic so the self-compassionate inner voice is something that we can work on so you know the other day I was sitting on my bed and I was feeling so upset about my dog and I didn't feel like moving I was almost like frozen I think I was just Netflixing and Instagramming I had screens everywhere and I let said to myself hey Lorraine why don't you get up get out of bed take a shower and then go down to the shop and get your some nice fruits, some berries. And so I literally self coached myself with like a compassionate voice, compassionate, kind voice, and literally got myself up like that. And it was a real, I had like, I met, you could even say it out loud, okay, Lorraine, let's get up. You know, this isn't maybe making you feel good. It's, it's good sometimes to sit and have a cry and really process their, those emotions. But you know, you haven't really done anything today. So if you can, you might feel better if you get into the shower, which is always good. Make the bed, which is really important um, for your, to feeling good. And then go for a walk. And I did. And you know what? It was incredible. I felt so much better. So it's that cultivating a positive, friendly voice that is supportive and is your own biggest cheerleader. Another method is writing a loving letter to yourself, which might sound a bit weird, but 
just writing a letter to yourself about all the things you've been through, everything you've done, um, and how wonderful the things that you've done, the things you've achieved are, and uh, um, and that can be so moving to do that and then read it out loud to yourself or just read it a couple of days later. But yeah, a loving kind letter as if you were writing to a friend to give your friend support about how far she's come or he's come or how, how far they've come and how amazingly they've done and what wonderful person that they are and write down things that you like about yourself and just be really caring and loving and supportive. So um, yeah, those are my points about self-compassion and I, they came to me while I was doing my skincare routine so I thought it would be really fun and helpful maybe to you to do it whilst um, I was kind of skincare and self-compassion together. So please write below um, how you found this video, what resonated with you, what didn't resonate with you, be kind. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's lovely to have you here. I really appreciate your support. And do, yeah, I'd love to comment below and subscribe. And also, um, if you haven't followed me on Instagram yet, do follow me on Instagram at Lorraine Pascal. I'll be doing so much more about psychology, self-care and self-love. And I've really missed you so much. So it's so lovely to talk to you. Lydia Elise Millen, who I love, I love her Instagram. She has always inspired me. And I was looking at her Instagram the other day uh, and her YouTube, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start making videos again because I love it. I love being creative and I love the slightly slower pace of a YouTube video rather than trying to have to get in 15 seconds and transitions and this and the other. So thank you for being here. And yeah, hit the like button if you've enjoyed the video. Speak to you soon, bye.